Hello everyone, today I would like to talk about an important virus of potatoes and tomatoes and that virus is a potato leaf root virus and this potato leaf root virus is very very severe virus of potatoes and tomatoes worldwide and it is threatening the potato crops worldwide. So let's begin. Today's lecture contents are introduction genome and virus transmission management and references in the introduction section i will talk about what is potato leaf root virus and its historical significance and then in the genome section i will talk about its genome and its orf open reading frame and its replication and many other things related to genome and then I will talk about virus transmission in detail and finally I will talk about uh, management how can we manage this virus and finally I will show you the references from where I have collected information so let's begin introduction as you know potato leaf rule it means that this virus is causing uh, ruling up the potato leaf potatoes potatoes it cast the leaves rule or uh, the leaves of the potatoes become curled upward so ruling and curling are two characteristic symptoms caused by this virus so that's why potato leaf rule virus and potato leaf rule virus is one of the most devastating virus causing severe losses worldwide in potatoes and potato leaf rule I mean is one of the earliest records of disease problems so remember this and second is uh, when we talk about this natural host range potato leaf root virus infects solanaceous plants and among the solanaceous plant potatoes are severely infected by this virus and tomatoes are also very infected by this virus but apart from potato and tomato this virus also infects weeds such as grown cherries and thorn apples. Potato leaf rule virus belongs to Lutioviridae family Lutioviridae and this family has two very important genera and those genera are Lutiovirus and Polyrovirus and these two main genera contain uh, viruses and those viruses are causing severe economic losses in various crops and these genera, these two genera differ from each other based on this RDRP enzyme and that enzyme is RNA dependent RNA polymerase and this enzyme is responsible for the replication of the viruses because of the nature of the RNA RDRP these two genera differ from each other and maybe some other genomic features but we are concerned with the potato leaf root virus potato leaf root virus belongs to genus Polyrovirus. So curling, as I have told you, potato leaf root virus causing curling of the leaves and the ruling of the leaves and ruling and curling are the characteristic symptoms caused by potato leaf root virus. So curling was first recorded in Lancashire, UK in 1760s and the curling has threatened the potato cultivation from 1760 to 1760. 70 but at that time the scientists didn't know about the casual agent that, that the curling the casual agent of the curling septums is potato leaf root virus the scientists didn't know but in 1916 the infectious nature of potato leaf root disease was first described that the curling is caused by the potato leaf root virus disease but still then then the important discovery that potato leaf root virus is transmitted by aphids and then discovery in 1920s and within the aphids about 10 aphids are responsible for transmission of potato leaf root virus and uh, among the aphids Mises persicae is the most efficient and important vector and it is described by Harrison in 1984 and then potato leaf root virus particles was first purified in 1960 and then then potato leaf root virus was detected in the from the potato from the disease potato crops using serological test serological assay and that assay is ELISA enzyme link aminosorbent assay in 1970 
and the potato leaf roll virus special antibodies or anti sera were made uh, of for the potato leaf roll virus through those antibodies and antigens like anti sera using serological technique potato leaf roll virus first, first was first detected in 1970 but potato leaf roll virus is a type species of the genus poliovirus what it means it means that the that, that this genus poliovirus is based on the on the potato leaf roll virus that is why potato leaf roll virus is type species of genus poliovirus the other viruses uh, have been described after this virus or have been classified in this poly in this genus poliovirus after potato leaf roll virus so potato leaf roll virus is the first virus in this genus and it is base it is foundation so we can say that this genus is the type the, 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 the type species of this genus is potato leaf roll virus other well studied poliroviruses are like bt western yellow virus and many other viruses in the genus poliovirus but potato leaf roll virus is type species and this is the mysis persiki as i have told you and this is the most efficient and important vector of potato leaf roll virus this is mysis mysis persiki effect and uh, i have told you potato leaf roll virus is is a very severe virus and continuously threatening the potato crops worldwide and nowadays are globally it causing 20 million tons yield losses and in some in certain cases it is responsible for 90 percent potato losses so it is, is, is it is severe like it causes it reduces the quality of the tubers it infect the leaves it infect the stems so it cause curling it cause um, ruling up the leaves in next slides we will talk about septums so this was uh, uh, all about the introduction now we will talk about the genome and virus transmission so when we say genome potato leaf roll virus is positive single stranded rna and its size is 5.9 kb what is meaning by positive single rna it means that when potato leaf roll virus enters into the host plant it acts as messenger RNA. It directly acts as a messenger RNA and it translates. It doesn't need to become minus single stranded RNA or other other RNA or DNA, maybe DNA, but positive sense single or stranded RNA mean when it enters into host plant, it directly acts act as a messenger RNA. It is very small. Isometric, isometric, spherical, and its diameter is about 24 to 25 nanometer. And it is non enveloped, it is not covered by lipids, it is not covered by any, any fatty acid, and it is spherical. And it, it it's, it's RNA of 5 prime N, a, a small protein is linked, and that protein is BPG, and its 3 prime N OH group is linked. So its genome, its RNA genome has neither uh, 5 prime cap nor 3 poly tail. So this one. And the second, the genome of potato leaf roll virus has 10 open reading frames. What these 10 open reading frames are doing? Actually these 10 open reading frames code proteins like B0, like P1, like replicas associated protein P1 to P2, P3A, P3, P4, so 10 ORF mean so they and these 10 ORF produce or code 10 different proteins and each protein has different function so we will talk about in a detail in next few slides so let's so this this as you know very beautiful symmetry of potato leaf roll virus so as you as you can see here so this is potato leaf roll virus it is very it is spherical as you can see here so now let's talk about genome very detail so this is the genome and uh, as, as you can see at 5 prime n it has a small protein link vpg n is 3n it has hydroxyl group attached no cap no tail number one number two it has 10 orf but this is very old picture uh, i couldn't find very new picture so but i just saw seven orfs here ORF0, ORF1, ORF2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 
and this is the genomic RNA, but there are two two subgenomic RNA, two subgenomic RNA, one genomic RNA, two subgenomic RNA. So this is the genome of RNA. What they are doing now? First, this is ORF0. It caught protein P0, and this is involved in the septum expression and host range. This ORF determines what kind of septum should be on the potato plants and what what should be the host range. And this ORF0 is also suppress suppressor of RNA silencing. I mean, it suppress it it acts like defense system of potato leaf roll virus. And when plants try to suppress the defense of potato leaf roll virus, and this ORF resist because it resists the RNA silencing mechanism of plants. So this ORF not is responsible for the resistance in potato leaf roll virus against the potato crops. So that's why I say suppressor of RNA silencing. And this and this this ORF1 and ORF2 produce P1 P0 proteins and that proteins is RNA dependent RNA polymerase. This enzyme is involved in the replication of the potato leaf roll virus. And this ORF1 produce P0, P1, P1 protein. I mean ORF1 code for P1 protein and this ORF1 produce proteins contain polyprotein and that and among these proteins containing polyprotein is this VPG. So now you have understood at the 5 prime end this VPG means proteins containing polyprotein and it is a genome link protein. And this ORF2 produce RAP1. RAP1 is replicase associated protein and this 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 protein is involved in the replication of the virus. And this ORF3, ORF4 and ORF5 are very important ORF potato leaf roll virus because they produce code protein and and they, they, they code for three proteins P3, P4, P5. P3 is a capsid protein and P4 is a human protein and P, P5 is the read through domain protein. And this moment protein, this is responsible for the moment of virus, cell to cell moment or long distance moment. And coat protein covers the virus and this red, read through domain, this portion is responsible for the effort transmission and the stability of the virus. So ORF3 and ORF5 and ORF4 coat for three very important protein, moment protein, coat protein and read through domain. And this two ORF function is still not clear. But but the most important thing in the in the genome of potato leaf roll virus is that because as you can see here, these two ORF and these two ORF, these two ORF, these two ORF are overlapping each other. So if they are overlapping each other, then then what would happen? So these are not the fully product of one ORF. So one product form, then the other products form through frame shift ribosome methods or the leaky scanning method. What is leaky scanning method? It is actually weak initiation code on triplet on messenger RNA sometimes skipped by ribosome in translation initiation. Like ribosome is actually when it is it is translating, it is actually skipping. Uh, skipping the codons then it produce another product it produce another product that kind of thing is called leaky scanning and the other is frame shifting what what it do when the ribosome translate it it slip one base either toward the five direction either toward the three direction so because of the frame shift because of the leaky scanning different products are formed here so you have to remember this these ORFs are overlapping each other so because of the frame shift and because of the leaky scanning different products are formed and the second important thing is that this is the genomic RNA but the but this one and this one are two subgenomic RNA so code protein and read through domain moment protein are produced by subgenomic RNA and P6 and P7 proteins are also produced by another subgenomic RNA 
The function of this P6 and P7 proteins are sleep. I would like to explain this again. So uh, this is the genomic RNA and it has two subgenomic RNAs. So what I want to say is this these ORFs are overlapping each other. So what I do what do ribosomes do mistakes? When ribosome translate this ORF it it do mistakes. So that this slash is mean ORF1 slash is P1 and this P1 and these are also like P1, P2, these are overlapping. And the second thing is leaky scanning. Because of the leaky scanning, ribosomes skip the codons and then translate the others. So because of the leaky scanning, because of the frame shift, you know, different protein products are from, from this ORF. So what I mean to say, uh, potato leaf rule virus genome has 10 ORFs, 10 ORFs and each ORF is coding a different type of proteins and each protein has a different function like I have told you ORF0 uh, produce, sorry, ORF0 course P0 protein and this P0 suppress the RNA silencing and it also is it is also determinants of the septums and host range so each protein each ORF has got different uh, proteins so this was all about the genome so you have understood that potato leaf rule virus genome is 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 has many has seven ORFs and eight ORFs 8 to 10 ORFs like they are starting from 0 to 7 so recently the scientists have described that potato leaf rule virus has 10 ORFs but uh, I'm showing this picture uh, of, uh, I couldn't find that picture but I would like to say that uh, still the uh, discoveries are going on and scientists are working on so this code protein uh, it causes the virus and uh, this moment protein it helps in moment of potato leaf rule virus so each protein has different function so this was all about the genome now let's go to another slide uh, second thing uh, it is icosahedral and uh, spherical geometries yeah, I mean potato leaf rule virus has icosahedral and spherical geometries and triangulation t mean triangulation equal to three symmetry what it means and its structure is actually icosahedral and symmetry is t equal to three symmetry is a very broad subject and like genome is a very broad subject when you are interesting in the symmetry i would like to show you a video uh, in a few minutes later The most common coordinate system used on the plane is the Cartesian coordinate system, denoted by a distance x in the horizontal direction and a distance y in the vertical direction. Put differently, the Cartesian coordinates identify a point by its position on a plane tiled by squares. Each coordinate indicates how many squares are traversed while traveling to the point along the axis. Squares, however, are not the only shapes that can tile to fill the plane. Consider instead a plane tiled by hexagons. In this setting, we fix an origin at the center of one hexagon and define two axes bisecting edges of the hexagons. Calling one axis h and the other k, we now have a coordinate pair of integers for each hexagon in the plane. Because the angle between the axes is 60 degrees instead of 90 degrees, the hexagonal coordinate system accommodates triangular patterns in a natural way. As a result, the hexagonal plane helps us understand three-dimensional shapes made up of triangles, such as the platonic solid called the icosahedron. The icosahedron has 20 sides, each of which is an equilateral triangle. It exhibits five-fold rotational symmetry at each vertex, two-fold symmetry at each edge, and three-fold symmetry at the centroid of each triangle. Actually, icosahedron is actually a shape, a geometric shape with 20 sides. These are faces. A 20 side what we call faces and each composed of an equilateral triangle so this is an equilateral triangle one face this is second phase three phase four phase five phase five phase. 
when you count these faces they are 20 and that shape is called the geometric shape is called icosahedron so potato lip root virus is icosahedron and its symmetry is icosahedron symmetry so but potato lip root virus symmetry is maybe the symmetry is also referred as 2 3 5 symmetry what it means it means that if you have football if you are putting the axis in through the center of the football and you are rotating so you will find different uh, symmetries and if you are putting the XL on the top of the football so when you are rotating that football you, you observe different symmetry symmetry is and so it, it depends on how you rotate how you rotate that football around the axis so I would like to clear in next few slides like this one two three what is this one two three actually oh, this is a face this is one face so this face has small units one two three these are called structural units in t triangulation one it has one two three structural units in t3 this kind of like when t1 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 three times it become t3 like one two three one two three one two three so when this three combine it become t3 i mean the triangulation number indicates the number of structure you know per face of the icosahedra so here one two three in a t1 virus one structure you know composed of three different proteins of you know, this gray blue and uh, gray blue and uh, red so these three combine they produce one structure unit you know, and that because of one structure unit you know, that is called t1 and here three structure unit you know, because of the three structure unit you know, is called t3 do you understand this so potato lip rule virus symmetry is a t3 this one this symmetry not t1 so in the, I will I would like also like to describe this symmetry in detail in this slide what is meaning by 2 3 5 symmetry look this is face one face this triangle you can say this is one face this reddish color are edges edges which one two three edges and this if you see here edges are in red color and uh, this vertices pentagon are the vertices and this is a triangle and this is the face face so edges vertices and face so now you under understand about the about one triangle and it has edges it has vertices and it has um, it has face yeah so face edges pentagon so here if you pass an axis through the through the center of the edge center of the this is the edge this is triangle this is one triangle let me let me show with a pencil this wet I think this is a triangle this is a triangle if you are passing axis here through this you assume this is a football and if you are passing an axis through the center and then you rotate this it is called two-fold symmetry and when 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 you this is triangle this is triangle and when you are passing axis and axis through the face then it is called threefold symmetry similarly in fivefold symmetry in fivefold symmetry when this is a triangle these are triangles and these are triangles and when you are passing an axis toward the center sorry through the through the vertex of the triangle that is called five symmetry like this is triangle 
and if you are passing x is through this paratex then it is called five fold symmetry so potato leaf roll virus symmetry is two three five symmetry it means that around the axis uh, its rotation is like two three five symmetry so icosahedron means it has 20 z 20 size 20 faces like one face two face three face in this way 20 face so potato leaf rule virus is icosahedron and its symmetry is 235 symmetry so now you have understood so now we go to our another lecture so now replication and potato leaf roll virus first penetrate into host cell so this is host cell and the virus first penetrate as it is RNA virus, you know that RNA virus is positive sense. And then what do it uncoat? When it enters, it removes its protein and then it releases its genomic RNA into cytoplasm. And then its ORF1 and ORF2 are translated to produce RNA dependent protein fusion protein and then replication takes place in cytoplasmic viral factories double stranded rna genome is synthesized from the genomic single stranded rna and double stranded rna genome is transcript or replicated produce viral messenger rna new ssrna genome and then expression of three co-terminal Small genomic RNA and then pro pro produce capsid coat protein and moment protein and finally virus assembly. So it means that when virus enters into host cell, it is positive sense RNA. It it does not need to become negative, it directly be become double stranded. And then from the double stranded it become it again produce plus strain plus strain and then it coats and then come out from the cell so this is all about the replication and it is all taking place in cytoplasm cytoplasm so this was all about the replication of potato leaf rule virus how it replicates in potato cells anyway as you have studied potato leaf rule virus has 10 ORF and uh, each ORF caught a different protein despite um, such diversity but still potato leaf rule virus is not highly variable at the sequence level for example if you take sequences from Canada Scotland, Netherlands, and then you compare, then the sequences will be similar, 98% similar. It means that potato leaf root virus is not highly variable virus. The genetic diversity is still very low. But sometime, but is despite uh, such uh, diversity, in biological properties as we have discussed different ORF code for different proteins but potato leaf root virus is still not highly variable as sequence level what it means it means that when you are taking sequences of potato leaf root virus from Canada Scotland and Netherlands then you compare those sequences and then you can find about 98 percent similarities in those sequences it means that potato leaf root virus is not highly variable but what what make it variable because of the dna replicases because these replicases rdrps as, have, as i have talked about what is rd rdrps and because these replicases are actually error prone on because they don't have any proofreading functions so that's why 
sometimes mutations occur because of mutations mutation one one substitution, substitution for genome per replication cycle so those mutation cause uh, some diversity in potato leaf rule virus so other mechanisms of diversity in potato leaf rule virus are recombination and re reassortment mutations sometimes deletions and intra specific recombinations have also occurred these are all responsible for the diversity in the potato leaf rule virus now we talk about the transmission as i have told you potato leaf rule virus is transmitted by about 10 effort species among the 10 effort species mysis spasiki is one of the efficient and important vector of potato leaf rule virus and uh, this is the photograph of mysis spasiki and which is very efficient and important vector of potato leaf rule virus and the virus is circulative non-propagative it means that when the aphid feed on the virus it doesn't replicate in the aphid it doesn't multiply inside the aphid so that is why it is called non-propagative and folem limited virus and this virus is limited to folem or potato crop and uh, circulative means it circulates in the aphids then goes to mid gut and then comes to the again to the salivary gland so the virus is circulative non-propagative and folum limited virus and the transmission is known as persistent transmission what it means it means it means that if it fits on as you know this virus is in folem is folem these are the potato leaf rule virus particles these are inside the folem and the aphid feed in, in the folems and um, folems for a very long time it feeds on folem and then in the virus goes into the aphid salivary glands and from, from the salivary gland that in goes to the mid cut mostly mid cuts when it enters to mid cuts from mid gets it goes to hemocele and from hemocele then it again come to the glands and then it is goes so so from acquisition and inoculation and uh, there is a latent period and uh, as, as you as you know so so it takes much time so the, the transmission process of potato leaf rule virus by if it takes 20 sorry 12 hours so 12 hours uh, it takes time 12 hours are in some cases days so so the, the virus um, and the if it feeds on folem and this is this virus is folem limited and then from acquisition to the transmission uh, it needs 12 hours or more so so this is that is why it is called the persistent transmission persistent transmission so that's why this virus is very easy to control as compared to the non-persistent viruses like PVY. PVY is a virus which is non-persistent viruses. If it directly take, take the virus and directly transmit. But this virus is folem limited and it goes very long time from folem to mid cut to hemocell. So it takes much time from acquisition and inoculation that is why it is very easy to control as compared to the other virus pv pv viral viruses so so this was the persistent transmission and the circulative mean the virus particles from the folem they enter into the aphids and they circulate and then they come toward the salivary gland again but they didn't multiply inside the inside the aphid so, so that's why so it is called non-propagative. If it is multiplied inside the feed, that would be called propagative. So this virus is circulative, non-propagative, and folem limited virus. Remember, folem limited virus. So now septums. We will discuss about septum. As this virus is a Folem limited virus. So what it does? 
So primary infections. Primary infections are infections during the current season or the growing season. So I suppose if it's uh, carry the virus and if it's transmit the virus to healthy potato crops in this season and then the potato crop become infected and those are called primary infections. And if if those infected tubers are grown, if those infected potato tubers are grown or planted in the next season and the infection comes from the infected tubers in the next season then that would be called secondary infection. Similarly, the septums are again two types, primary septums, secondary septum. If septums from the primary infection, they are called primary septum. They are normally visible in the young leaves with upward ruling of the leaf margins. And septums of the secondary infection are visible on all leaves because the tubers have already infected. In the farmers have grown and grown infected tubers, so that is why all the leaves become will be ruled ruled up upward. And infected pill plants become stunted. So secondary septums are more severe than the primary septum because primary septums are caused by primary infection. Primary infections are the current season infection because the virus has just infected the potato crops. So yes, so if you can see this lower leaves, now they have become like rule. They have become ruled upward. If you can see these young leaves, lower leaves have become ruled upward. Sometimes they become crunch, stiff, and uh, if you see an underside will become reddish and purple in color. And uh, yes, and if you can see, and this this these plants are stunted, are stunted. Infected plants are stunted. Actually, what why these leaves uh, curl upward? Because uh, this virus is phloem limited, and it actually impair phloem. So when phloem is impair, what happen? Phloem is not transporting car carbohydrates from the leaves to tubers, because phloem is impaired. So the carbohydrates start to accumulate in the leaves, uh, sometimes two to three more times, times more than the healthy leaves. And that's why there is a corresponding reduction in the tuber due to impair phloem transport. As I have already told you, potato leaf root virus is a phloem limited virus, so it impair the phloem and the carbohydrates from the leaves uh, to tubers from the leaves to phloem cannot reach, so carbohydrates accumulates in the leaves and because of the target they, they rule upward like this. Similarly, in as you can see, and this is the infected plant, this is healthy plant, the infected plant, the leaves have become curled, ruled and stunted. And similarly as you can see this is the healthy plants, these are the healthy plant and these are the infected plant, the infected plant is stunted. And in tomatoes the same leaf ruling of tomatoes foliages. And in tubers you can see the necrosis. Why? Because phloem is already impaired because of the virus. So the tubers cannot get the uh, storage, cannot get the rich storage and uh, sometimes um, kalos because of the kalos accumulates in the stems and tuber. That is why net necrosis are formed. So these are the septums on tubers and uh, it, these septums reduce the quality of potato tubers. So net necrosis. So necrosis may develop in the phloem tissue of stems and petioles. So if phloem are impaired, so how the starch and carbohydrates and reach to tubers and other parts of the potato crop. So that's why the leaves become ruled and tubers show net necrosis. Now management, how can we manage this virus? As, as I have told you, potato leaf root virus is persistently transmitted. It is very easier means of control. 
because it is purchased it takes much time from acquisition to transmission so we have very uh, much time to control it as compared to non persistent viruses and we can also control indirectly by applying systemic and foliar insecticides and if we control aphids then we control virus and some insects some recommended insecticides are imidacloprid then this this endosulfan these are normally used for the control of aphids sanitation and c certification is also very important and the tubers should be check properly whether they are infected by the potato leaf root virus the seed should be checked properly by for the potato leaf root virus so you need to buy uh, very good certified seeds and uh, sanitation is also very important if in the field if there is any volunteer tubers tubers from the previous crop or previous season so you need to remove all those tubers all those residues from the field clean the fields and then you plant up so this was all the management now i would like to go for references so i have got help from this web page and the polyro potato leaf rule was alter plant vector interaction using three viral protein i'm sorry from this article i have got help they have written a very good article research articles on potato leaf rule virus I also got information from the from this article from stem loop structure and potato about the ORFs and this guy described 10 ORFs for the potato leaf root virus and finally I would like to thanks uh, this web page because some of the figures I have got from this web page so the authors of these papers as well as the people involved in this research I, I would like to thank you all of you and finally i would also like to thank you all of you who are watching this lecture who are hearing who are listening so i would like to thank you all so thank you